Hello everyone, how you doing? I hope we're all ready for Holy Week. It's only one day away, right? So we have Palm Sunday starting tomorrow. I know that this is a time that's so important for you as it is for me as a Catholic. And it's a time this Holy Week is usually a time that we usually look forward to. A time that's a time of real spiritual growth for so many of us. I want to take this time to just say hello to you and see how, uh, let you know how things are going here at the parish but also hopefully extend our own prayers for each one of you. I want to thank the sisters for all that they're doing to live stream our masses. As you'll notice on Facebook, I know not everyone has Facebook, so I know it's not available for everybody, but usually even if you put the link in that you're able to get that Facebook um, uh, mass or, or service that, that's provided, even if you're not a Facebook, even if you don't have your name uh, and don't have Facebook personally yourself. So the sisters are doing all of that live streaming, and we're so thankful for them for doing that. And that's a lot of work, too, as well. We've also, each one of us, have got a chance to touch base with you. I know I've called many of you myself, and we kind of split up the, uh, the parishioner list, and we tried to call everyone that we could over these past couple of days. Just to touch base with you, just to let you know that we're thinking about you, that we care about you, and also ask for your prayer intentions that you might have. Uh, thanks so much for everyone's generosity. A lot of you are sending in your envelopes, and I really appreciate that. As you know, the, the bills keep coming as well. But I do know that each one of you with your families, you know, you may have struggles yourself as well. So we understand that as well. But if you're able to give, you know, please continue to bring those envelopes in as long, you know, as long as you're able to. There's also other means to be able to do that as well. If you'd like to do that, um, you know, through direct deposit and so forth. And we give thanks to all those who have given to the Merino Fund over the years. You know, Father Richard set the Merino Fund up a number of years ago, and he did it for the purpose of if something like this happened, you know. And every single fall, you would get these envelopes with that talked about the Merino Fund that all of Father, Father Merino had done in this parish and for the neighborhood and asked you to give something, you know, and many of you, you know, stepped up and, and gave. And over the years, thank God for that, because if we didn't have that, we would be in a lot, of, a lot of trouble, which, you know, a lot of parishes are right now. They're really struggling. They're having to take out loans and so forth. The diocese is trying to provide help for, for different parishes. We are not in that kind of desperate situation. I'm so thankful for that, thankful for you and your generosity over the years that you've been able to provide that, that fund that we only touch in desperate situations, which I haven't touched since I got here. But of course, we're going to need to dip into now. But, you know, it never, we can't just take that for granted. We have to continue to build that up and also make sure that we're solvent right now and still bringing in, sending in your envelopes as well. I had to send this, the office staff home. And that was just according to the, the diocesan policies and based on what the governor had said. So I sent, I had to send them all home, but we're also trying to make sure that they're provided for as well in this time. So when you call, it's going to be one of our priests. We're going to try to answer the phones as best we can and to provide for your needs as best we can. If we, if we can't get to the phone, please leave a message and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. I'm trying to find, trying to brainstorm and find alternative ways to sort of reach out to each one of you. Uh, of course, Facebook is one way, but I also know that many of you don't have Facebook. So what we've invested in is an uh, inexpensive way. It's called Flock Notes, and it sends out these email blasts. So basically, it'll send out a blast to a bunch of emails. So I tried to get as many of the emails that we collected a number of weeks ago from you when we had the uh, update of our emails, and also the emails that we had in our database before. And I'm trying, trying to send out a couple blasts this week. I hope you got it. If you didn't get it, please let us know your, your updated email, and I'll put you on that list. And also, this is great because so many of our uh, groups can use this as well. Holy Name, uh, St. Vincent de Paul, Sacred Heart, all the other groups can use this flock notes too. So this is going to make it a lot easier for us to communicate with each other, especially in, in difficult and strange times that we're in today. Uh, you know, if you want to watch Holy Week, please watch Holy Week services. You have this time, this time when God has given you, when you can spend some time in prayer. So take this time this week. You know, maybe you don't, you're not able to go to work. 
and you just spend some time maybe watching it on EWTN or one of the other channels, or you can watch the live stream version that we have from the Sisters Chapel. And we're going to do the best we can to provide a nice service for each one of you, and of course, remembering each one of you in our prayers in these sacred and holy days. <clears throat> so today is Palm Sunday, or tomorrow is Palm Sunday, and we usually think of palms on this day, of course. Everyone wants to get their palms, but really... The big, it's usually called Passion Sunday, or at least they changed that after the Second Vatican Council. They said it's better to call it Passion Sunday, even though we give out the palms, because we read the Passion Gospel. So you remember that this is the longest gospel that we read at any time during, during the year. So usually this is when we, if someone's older, we tell them, you know, you can sit down for the gospel. So I'm actually not going to read the whole gospel right now. Um, but you can check that out on our live stream. Again, that, with the live stream, you can watch it throughout the day as well. So you can watch uh, us do the do the Passion Gospel. Each one of the priests are going to take a part, okay? So, but I am going to give you a little bit of a reflection today on, on, on the Passion, right? So basically, we, we all know the story of the Passion. We know what happened. And it really is, for me, it really is the Passion is, it's just like a story of human nature. You know, <laughs> we all walk into, or, or Jesus rather, walks into Jerusalem and they're waving palms, and they're saying, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. How, how great you are. They're going to make him king. And how human that is. You know, we, we celebrate celebrities, right? And then all of a sudden, a couple of days later, these same, some of these same people, are, or um, maybe some of these same people, are probably asking for his crucifixion. So human, right? Uh, but then, of course, he goes through the passion, each aspect of the passion, going into the garden, of course, and then asking the Lord to take this cup from him. Then the, the scourging at the pillar, the carrying of the cross, having to carry that heavy cross of Calvary. Probably he almost lost blood at that point. That's why he died so quickly. He gets to Calvary and to that hill, and they crucify him there. Our Lord is crucified. We just cannot imagine the pain that he went through at that crucifixion. I have the crucifix behind me here. Uh, but he was nailed to the cross. Usually, when many of the pictures we'll see or, or movies, we'll see people actually tied to the cross. Many times they would do that. Eventually, you would die because of suffocation, but not because of the actual wounds from the blood and wounds on your hands and your feet. So, so Jesus is crucified, of course, and then he offers his ultimate sacrifice. There's a few last words, and oftentimes priests focus on those seven last words, you know, that's a focus that we do sometimes because they're so important because Jesus is hanging there on the cross. Every time he has to breathe, he has to lift himself up. And when he lifts himself up, he's actually saying a few words. And so these are probably the most important things that he has to say, that he wants to say before he gives up his life because it's so painful for him just to lift up himself up and to say these last words. So the beginning of the gospel, of course, as we've spoken about, I'm going to give you my homily now, by the way. <laughs> I was just giving you a little overview. Uh, beginning of the gospel, the crowds come out and they have their palms, as we said, Hosanna, Hosanna to the king. But how quickly things turn. Things turn so quickly. And Jesus warns his disciples and he warns each one of us that this will happen. On the way to Calvary, in those weeks heading up to Calvary, You'll see in each of the Gospels that Jesus keeps warning his disciples. He keeps telling them, you know, I'm going to be crucified here. You may not realize it. Everyone's kind of proclaiming me as king now, but I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to have to carry my cross. You have to carry your cross too, and so forth. And even during the Gospel passage, which we'll read on Palm Sunday, Jesus says, This night you will have your faith within me shaken. And watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. What is that test that Jesus is talking about? What does he mean when he says the test? Well, for each one of us, we're going to have some droughts in our life. You know, times when we don't really feel close to God, consolation. All right. And we're going to have to dig deeper. You know, they say about a plant, the plant either digs deeper and the roots continue to grow, and actually you become a stronger person, a stronger plant, right? We reach down and, and find God's grace in his life, or we wither and we die. So all the disciples fled. 
let's be honest, in the, the passion narrative, which we'll listen to tomorrow, all the disciples will flee. Not one of them was successful from an earthly standard. They all were weak. But, and the drought came, and the plant, as I said, could neither take root or not. But for Peter, and many of the other disciples as well, they will return to Jesus. They will seek mercy. They will keep seeking God. That's really important. Um, even when they fell and did horrible things. Now Judas, unfortunately, as we'll see, he shows us what it's like to despair. His sin was not, the worst sin he did was not the betrayal. It was his despair. And Jesus, we all fall. We all fall. And each one of these people we see as Peter and, and Judas, they both fell. But do we grow in humility? Do we dig deeper our roots? This week is so much about unconditional love and the passion narrative is. Bitter betrayal, terrible falls, God emptying himself for us. There's many themes. That's why, you know, it's very easy to preach about the passion narrative because it's, of course, really long. But also, there's just so much you could talk about. But I'll just pick one, and that would be that what do we do when the cross comes to us? The disciples didn't expect this. You know, they were walking in with Jesus when he was riding a donkey and everyone was proclaiming him king. They did not expect this to happen. But then when the cross comes into their life, what do they do? Ultimately, they did fail. They, they fled. But later, they were able to dig deeper. At least most of them were. Peter and Judas are not so much different. They both betrayed the Lord. But Peter return to God for mercy. This week is really about mercy. Our faith is all about this week. This week is just, I mean, if you want to explain Christianity to someone, just explain Holy Week, you know, of course, the incarnation too and Jesus' birth. But that humbly accepting his mercy, God died for us. He gave us his mercy. And when he gave us his mercy, what do we do? How do we respond? How are we going to respond today? The worst sin is not betrayal or any of those, those things, but to reject God's mercy or to not seek it because we don't believe or we're afraid. Lord, increase my faith. Lord, increase your faith that we may believe that God truly is merciful as he says he is.